Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Sarah Godin and together we go through how to create an event capture program. Okay, I'm back here with Sarah. Hey Sarah. Hi Nicholas. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Good, good, good. So today we're going to be looking at the event capture, how to create uh, an event capture program in DHIS2. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think mostly we can just jump right into the system. Good. Yeah, I've got uh, 10 steps here. Um, so we'll go through it and kind of toggle back and forth just because we've got some nice screenshots that'll help you out. So in the previous uh, video for designing, we, we shared that events are for single uh, a single event without registration. The event can be repeatable, but it's just a one-time thing. So to set it up, we're going to set it up in programs and attributes. Mm -hmm. We're going to start in program, and we would add new. Now we have a program already set up, so I'll flip over to that screen shortly, but just to show you what is required, or the names and the short name of this program. This program, this is where you determine if it's an event capture or a tracker. So because it's without and we want to do event, we're going to pick without. So this kind of changes what becomes available to you. Mm -hmm. um, the default option is drop down. But depending if you're doing data entry on a phone or on the computer, you may have a preference to try radio button, but we'll mm -hmm. just keep a drop down list for now. Um, everything else here is not uh, needed to set it up, so we're going to skip this for now. But let's see the other program that we have. The school counselor visit was showed in um, the previous assignment, mm -hmm. and let's check it out. So it's, again, without registration. And we're just using the drop down list. So the first step of naming your program is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Basically, we've just said it's a name and now it's blank. So our next step is to uh, set up the stage. There will be one stage for our event, and it is the actual school counselor visit. So when you're doing this in your program and you click add stage, you'll have a, probably an add new button up here. Actually, for event capture, it automatically creates a stage for you. Great. Okay. So all you can do then is edit it. Mm -hmm. but this is the uh, important part. So to edit, um, what we want to do is pick the data elements that we've previously imported that are going to be used in this event. So for this, um, we're just having why someone came and then the age of the person. Now, don't be fooled by these. You actually don't need to check any of these boxes. So th these will display in reports. You don't need to check these boxes. Okay. That's good to know. Um, if you have a, yeah, so whenever there's an event, the uh, the system assigns a date to it. So the date could be, um, you know, the date of visit or whatever makes sense for your program. Mm -hmm. um, usually the default is a report date, so we tend to keep that the same, but it could be, you know, date of visit, something mm -hmm. like that. Yep, and there's a couple other features here that you could choose if it makes sense for your program. So you could say after it's completed, we don't want anyone to make edits, so you could check that box. If you're using GIS and you want to know where exactly where the form was uh, create, uh, filled out, you could capture the coordinates. Mm -hmm. And then if you've set up validation rules for your um, data elements, for example, you only want to see students who are between the ages of 10 to 15 and someone enters it for a 16 year old, if you check this box, it wouldn't allow them to complete the form. So that's a way that you can set you know boundaries for your data entry staff. Cool. Yeah, so once we moved our data elements over, you can change the order in which they appear by using these green arrows. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. Um, and then we would save it. So I'm just going to flip back to our assignment. We're, we're over halfway through already. Um, so we've filled it out. We've viewed the program stage. So the last and a very important piece, um, we've got two things to do. We want to pick where this event should be happening, so the org units um, where it needs to be assigned to, and who should have access to the program. Okay. So the where is pretty easy. Um, we just go back to the program, so either use your back, um, you can use, this actually just moves it away, so don't be fooled, <laughs> uh, or you can pick here from your side menu. Mm -hmm. So we'll go back, we'll click once, and we'll click assign to program organization units. So in previous assignments, we set up groups. So this is nice if you have groups set up that makes sense. Rather than going through and manually clicking, mm -hmm. you can just say, I want this to be for Toronto schools. Selecting group, and then it should uh, highlight 
all of those. So mm -hmm. let's pretend for now. Is it okay if I pick Toronto schools yeah, for this definitely. one, Nicholas? Okay, great. So anyone who has access to Toronto schools and anyone who has access to this program can now see it. So how do I get the users to see it? That is through the users app. So this is something that people uh, sometimes miss because it's separate from the program. But no one can see it unless their user role has ability to. So for this example, let's say we want data entry people. So anyone who can do data entry in our system, we're going to edit. And similar to how when we set up data sets and forms, we give people permission, we want to do the same with programs. So as soon as you've made your program, it's going to appear in this list. And you'll just push it over and save it. And um, because we're doing a tracker and an event, um, when you want to do data entry, it's going to be through Event Capture. So any data entry users can use the Event Capture app or online um, and then, you know, find the right org in the same way they would. So that's, mm -hmm. I think, a good a good introduction, and it gives you the basics to get set up. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you have anything to add, Nicholas? No, that's that's pretty good. I think that's that's a good step-by-step -step of how to create a event tracker uh, or event capture program. Mm-hmm. Great. So I think in that case, we'll, we'll wrap this video up and then the next video we'll talk about the more, um, the more steps that are involved with setting mm -hmm. up a, a tracker capture program. Sounds good. Great. Thanks. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 